Speaker. The Honourable Peter Dunn. Mr Speaker, I want to share the sentiments expressed by others in tribute to Mary for all that she's achieved as our clerk uh, over the last eight years and the 20 odd years beforehand that she was a servant of this parliament. I've often thought that there are a couple of essential attributes that a good clerk requires. One is an absolute poker face to be able to listen to all of the debates in this chamber, absorb their content so that the Speaker can be advised to make appropriate rulings, but never ever betray a hint of prejudice or interest one way or the other in the course that the debate was taking. And Mary, you over the years have proved to be absolutely inscrutable in that regard. And I think it is a tribute to your professionalism, your impartiality and your skill that at a time when passions have mounted greatly in this House, you have been often the one calm voice of order amongst us. So thank you for that. And I think that the second attribute that a speaker, uh, that, that, sorry, that a clerk needs to possess is an extraordinary ability to assess the situation and to offer advice to the individual member, either privately or through the chamber, seeking assistance on a particular point, again, without ever revealing how stupid, trivial, uh, extreme or otherwise you think the question that you are being asked may be. And I think all members would feel that you have provided advice that has been professional, it has been thorough, and it has often saved MPs from themselves in particular situations. And again, for that we are grateful. But I think you've demonstrated a third skill as well. It is fashionable outside this place these days to try and reduce the traditions and the history and the flavour of Parliament to being somewhat of a fiction. And we've seen a succession of uh, occasions over the years where external influences, Philistines in the main, have tried to treat Parliament as just another government agency or just the same as a large corporate. And often it has been the clerk, in particular Mary, who has stood against that degree of barbarism that's intruded into this place to try and uphold the good and proper traditions of a free and democratic parliament, to try and say that there are issues that MPs need to be steadfast on, even if they may feel a little bit ambivalent themselves about doing so. And I think your guidance, your determination and your absolute commitment and love for this place has shone through on each of those occasions. So we will be, inevitably, the poorer for your departure. And it's little solace to us as we slave through the order paper to know that you will be on a cycling holiday in Italy or fishing in the Otaki Forks. That's great for you and I'm delighted that's the case. But Parliament will seriously miss your wisdom. I am a little jealous actually, yes. <laughs> will seriously miss your wisdom, your guidance, your input and your steadfast hand quietly on the tiller of state. Having said that, uh, can I say to David that, uh, like we said probably a few years ago when Mary uh, succeeded, that uh, you have big shoes to fill. Uh, we've got every confidence in your ability to do so, uh, but I'm sure that uh, only an email or a telephone call away will be some guidance and some assistance if you need it as you transition into the role. Mr Speaker, can I just conclude by making this observation? Over the years, this parliament has been extraordinarily well served by its officers. And I think often we take them for granted. Today is an occasion to pay tribute to one of our best. Mary, all the very best for your future. I hesitate to use the word retirement because I'm sure it will not be that. Uh, you have friends here who will continue to show an interest in what you're up to. Love to hear from you and look forward to whatever the next turn in your extraordinary, varied and interesting life may be. Mr. Speaker.